Okay, so we'll start. Hello, everyone. Hope you all are safe and doing well. I thank you all for joining us today. We are back with a new session on EIE Fresh Talk presented by Excel in Excel. A company started in 2010 as an edutech firm that over time expanded into data analysis. We strongly believe that for a world driven by data, information is power and excellence is our brand. Our core services include consulting and training. Let me give you this on EIE Fresh Talk. It is a platform where we host great leaders and experts from various fields to speak regularly on a variety of topics ranging from finance to analytics. Few of our past events are by Mr. Chandu, Mr. C.A. Saran Kumar, Mr. Sumit Bansal, C.A. Vijay Agarwal. Our topic for today's session is Rich Delights by Ms. Paula. Paula is a qualified CPA with over 15 years of experience in the fields of accountancy, management, process involvement, internal audit, group accounts, operation management, and training. Her experience spans across a broad range of industries and sectors. Paula has been key speaker at many accounting events where her talks on Excel are received very positively. Taken from her experience in accounting and business fields, Paula also has online courses for those wishing to upskill, especially in the area of spreadsheet, bookkeeping, and accounting. We welcome you, ma'am. Before we begin, I request the participants to welcome our speaker by writing hi in the chat section. I also request you to type your questions and comments in the chat section. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much for that introduction, and it's really, really nice to be here. What I'm going to do is, first of all, share my screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Great stuff. Okay, well, I'm just going to start with an, an introduction, even though I was given an awesome introduction just there. My name is Paula Guilfoyle, and I am from Ireland. Ireland is in Europe. It's a little island off the coast of Europe, and I'm sharing a picture here of the city that I live in. I live in the capital of Ireland, which is Dublin. A little bit, little bit more on my background. I am a mother of two. I'm a CPA, an Excel lover, and very recently became an MVP. I have a keen interest in blockchain technology and the launch of Web3. If anybody wants to contact me, my website details are there on the screen at the moment, theexcelclub.com, along with my email address and my LinkedIn profile. I am also then a Udemy instructor. What we're going to talk about today was originally called rich data types, but very recently Microsoft have actually changed the name from rich data types to linked data types. So on short notice, I'm renaming this session today as linked data types in Excel. So we're going to look at the geography options and we're also going to look at the stock options. So Excel, as we know it, Excel is made up, as you know, of a screen of grids. Each grid is a cell and in each cell you can have only one data type. Data types can be numbers, they can be text, they can be strings, they can be booleans but you can't have a combination of data types contained within one cell. The most adventurous that we could have got before was a hyperlink that would link to a different cell or a formula, but we couldn't have multiple data types. So if we were to put in test one, two, three, that's gonna come in as a text value. Whereas if we just put in a number, as we all know, it comes in as a number value. And that's Excel as we know it hell in a cell, you're stuck in a cell and you can't do too much more until the launch of data types. So data types were introduced in Excel in 2019. They are available in Excel 365 
and they were originally released with just the geography and the stock options. So we're going to go through a few examples here today. We're going to look at data types. We're going to look at tricks in using data types. We're going to look at inserting map charts using data types. We're then going to look at the stock history function, a new function stock history that can be used on its own or with data types. And then we're going to quickly talk about the future. So we will get stuck in. I have some data here. We're going to start with our geography data types. And I have some cities, which are basically text values in a cell. So if we pick on any of these cells here, you'll see the data type is general. And there's not much that you can do except for the fact that it, it is a text data type. But if I select these cells and from the data ribbon under data types, we can select geography. And what this will do is convert these cells into linked data types. Now, a linked data type contains loads of information about the geographical location that we just selected. And you can identify this as a rich data type with this little icon here. You can see a flag when you're looking at geography locations. So within this, if we click on this little card, we get information about the city. So we get some images. And if we scroll down through, we get some more information such as the country, the population, the area, the latitude and longitude, description, and a few other bits and pieces. So what happens is Excel reaches into the web and pulls back all this information and holds this information within a card in Excel. Now, each of these cards has information about the, its own city. So they all show different information. Now, the information in the card isn't very much use in the cards on their own. So what you're able to do is you're able to extract information. You see this little icon here, insert data. Well, by clicking this, you can then select any of the fields and you can pull in data from any of the fields straight into Excel. So I first pulled in the area. I then pulled in the country. I could pull in the name or any of the details. Now I'm gonna quickly just delete them because I've done just one there, but you can, if you select numerous data types, pull in the data for all of them at once. So there I just pulled in the area. I can pull in a description. Now, when we pull in a description, not all cards have a description. So it depends on what is stored on the web where it reaches into. In this case, we don't have a description for Dublin or New York or Mumbai or Sydney. And so we get the field error. The field error is a new error that comes along with these linked data types to identify that this field is not available within that particular card. Now, we, that's how you can simply extract information, but you can also extract information using what's known as a dot formula. So if I reference a cell, when I reference a rich data cell, you see this drop down appears with all of the headers or the fields that are available. So if I select the area, you'll see dot area comes in and by hitting enter, it pulls in the area field. Again, you can do these for multiple, you can do, do this for multiple cells all at once. So if we were to select all of our cells and put in a dot function, we can then put in the area and it'll spill the area using the dynamic array functions. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with dynamic arrays, dynamic arrays are also a new feature in Excel. And dynamic arrays come with a spill range. So you see the formula is only in this first cell here. If I click into a different cell, you'll note that the formula is actually grayed out. So that means that the formula is not residing in the cell. It's residing in this top cell here. The spill range, as you can see, are these cells all in the blue box around here. But let's say there's something in the way. With dynamic arrays, you will get a spill error. So this is another new error that comes along with these dynamic arrays. And if you click on this error, 
You can select the obstructing cells. You could then move the data somewhere else if it's in the way or just delete it and the values will spill from you. Now, what's really cool about this is if we put in... Paula? Yes. Uh, can you zoom your screen a little bit? Uh, people are not able to see. I can indeed. Is that a little bit better? Great stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so if we put in a, another city, so I'll put in London, it will automatically detect, because the cells above are linked data types, it will automatically detect that this too is also a linked data type. We would then have to fill our formulas down. And with this one, as I hadn't selected the entire range, the spill area didn't continue the spill, but when I updated it, it did. So that is a quick introduction to the geography types. We then have the ability to also look at currencies and FX rates. So I have some foreign currency rates here. I've US dollar to Euro, I've Euro to Sterling. I've Indian rupees to Euro, Indian rupees to US dollar to Sterling. And then I have GBP to Euro. So I'm gonna select these and I am going to go to our stocks data type. Now we see now that we have this little building icon which represents the stock data type. But this last one, it hasn't been able to identify for us and it's left us with a question mark. So then we can go over to our data selector. Now, very often the data selector will search through the internet and will return something that it thinks is equal. And in this case, it didn't find it. So I can just update the value in the cell. So I'm gonna go back to my cell. And update it here. It's pulled in a different stock type. So again, it didn't pull in the right one. So quite often you have to be careful. I don't know why I put in the equals. And it will identify the stock type for you. Now in these, the exact same, we can extract information from this. So we have the likes of the 52 week high, the 52 week low, the change, percentage change, currency from currency, the high, the instrument type, because with stocks, and we're gonna look at this later, you can also look at stocks, you can look at foreign currencies, you can look at commodities, and you can also look at cryptocurrency. So you can pull in the instrument type and different information. So we'll pull in the current price at the moment. Now you see there when we pulled in the current price, all of these cells are formatted with the actual currency. Now this is smart formatting because if we go back here, we see that it is pulled in as accounting for all of our cells, but my local settings would be for Euro, yet the correct currency has been pulled in for the actual formatting on these cells themselves. You can convert these back to text. So I'm gonna select them. If we right click and under here from data types, you can convert these back to text. And when you convert them back to text, you lose the link and the field error will return. Now you can also refresh the data very easily. So I'm just gonna convert these back again to data types and these update. And at any stage, as these are live values, you can press refresh and they will update to the most recent values that are actually available. And nothing has changed there because there hasn't been any updates. So that is how you refresh the um, rich data types or the linked data types. Now I also have some stocks here as well. So I've got the Microsoft Corporation, I've got M&M, I've got Castrol and KDDL. You can convert these as well. So I'm gonna just convert these. Now you'll notice there that I had the full company name in there, but let's put in Facebook. And I only typed in Facebook, but it went off and it searched the web and it came back with the full company name. And it also came back with the stock exchange. 
So the we have the NASDAQ stock exchange and we have the local Indian stock exchange for some of these as well. Now you can change these stock exchanges and you can specify a different stock exchange by changing the actual stock exchange up here in the title of the company. With these, the type of information that you can extract from these is very much the same as the information that you could extract with the FX rates, with the foreign currency rates. So you've got the 52 week high, the low, the beta, the change, the currency description, but you have additional information about the company, such as the employees, the headquarters, the industry, the last trade time. And there's a lot of information, the price earnings ratio, the price out shares outstanding. There's a huge amount of information here that you can quickly extract into Excel just using these linked data types. Now, there's also the ability then to look at cryptocurrencies for those that are interested in cryptocurrencies. Not all cryptocurrencies are supported, only really the top ones are supported. And I've spent quite a long time playing around to see which ones are supported. And to be honest, there's only five or six that are currently supported at the moment. But you can get you can get the rates for your local currency. So if we get the 52 week high, we can see that the 52 week high of Bitcoin to US dollars has been 12,324. And the 52 week high of Bitcoin to the Indian rupee has been 872,000. So that is cryptocurrencies and the basics of extracting information from your rich data types or your linked data type cards. We're going to move on now and we are going to look at some tricks for working with data types. And the first trick is to make sure that you use a table. So all of the examples that I've shown you so far, I did not have a table set up. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to select this data. I'm going to press Control and T for table. I don't have a header. Actually, I'm going to come out of there and I'm just going to put in a header. So we have a header. And then I'm going to convert this into a table with Control and T and my table has headers. So that is just a standard table in Excel. Now from my data ribbon, if I select my cities and I go to data and geography and I can convert these into rich data types in a table. I'll just zoom in a little bit there so people can see this. Okay, so the benefits of using tables, it, I would highly recommend if you are looking at rich data types that you do use tables because it makes extracting data an awful lot easier. You may have noticed on our previous examples, when I extracted data, we have no headers. So it's very difficult to know what these values actually mean. But when you use a table and you pull in a field, the, the header auto populates for you. So that is really, really cool. Now you can just add in another column using the, using by typing in. So if I type in population, and I start with a P, it's identifying already because it's a table that I'm looking for a field from the rich data type. So if I select population, it quickly just pulls in the population for us. Now you can also use the dot function that I showed you earlier. So instead of pulling in a header like this, but the header is the prefer preferential way, I can reference the cell and put in a dot and select area. And we see that the area has pulled in, but what hasn't pulled in is an actual header. So it's easier to add the columns by selecting the column name or by selecting the field option here to extract data. Now, you don't always have to extract all of the fields if you're carrying out calculations. You can carry out calculations without extracting actual fields. So let's just say we wanted to find out the population per square kilometer. Well, what we could do is we could use the dot function. So I'm going to reference the cell. I'm going to take our population 
I'm going to then divide this by, now when you're using a formula, IntelliSense seems to stop working. So when I referenced the cell that time, the IntelliSense didn't work. So you have to know the field that it is that you're looking for. And then you can carry out a calculation. So that is the population per square kilometer in each of these cities. And I showed you that using the dot function. But there's also another new function that came along with these linked data types, and that is the field value function. So we're going to carry out the same formula again, this time using the field value function. And the field value function extracts a value from a given record, the record being the rich data type or the linked data type cell. So this is looking for our value, which is our city cell. And then it's looking for our field name. Now our field name, again, IntelliSense is not working here. So needs to go into inverted commas. And we can pull in the population using our field value function there. But again, there is no header on that column. But what it shows is that these two columns that I extracted a minute ago, we don't need them to actually carry out calculations. So if I take our field value population and I divide that, I'm gonna change this to area. And we get our population per square kilometer as easy as that. Locating rich data types on a workbook can cause a problem sometimes. When I am looking for stuff or auditing an Excel workbook or an Excel spreadsheet, I would be very familiar with the go to special. So I pressed F5 there to bring up the go to, and I'm going to select special. And in here, you can quickly jump to constants, you can quickly jump to formulas, to blanks, to objects. But there is no option to jump to rich data types. So if you're trying to find these, if you're working in a large workbook or a large spreadsheet and you're trying to find your rich data types, you can't just go to go to special. It's a little bit more complex. So the workaround that I have found is if we go to our file option and if we go to our compatibility checker, Oh. Where's my compatibility checker? Check for issues, check compatibility. Now we get this compatibility checker box, which I'm going to make a little bit bigger. And what we want to look for in here is an error where it's looking for the linked data types. So here it is here. This workbook contains data types that are not supported in earlier versions of Excel. By selecting find, it's going to jump to all the different linked data types that you have in your workbook. So you can locate them very, very quickly. And I think that is a pretty nifty trick if you're trying to quickly find rich data types, linked data types in your workbook. Moving on now, we are going to look at using these rich data types to create a map chart. So I have some regions here in India, and I'm going to convert this into a table. So again, control and T, and my table has headers. Then I'm going to convert this into our rich data types. And I'm going to extract our population. So now we have the population for all of these regions available. I'll just zoom in a little. So you can see the data. And now I am going to just go to insert. And from insert, we have our map charts. So if I select this map chart here, we have our filled map chart. Oh, let me just reselect that data. I'm going to delete that. I've done something wrong there because I didn't have the entire table selected. Map charts, filled map. And there we have a filled map 
based on the population in the regions. So we have lightest color being the smaller numbers going to darker um, color for the more populated areas. Now we can, if we right click, select format data series. Now format data series, will open up our format data series pane, which I will just drag over here. And this gives us a number of options. We have map project projection, map area, and we have our map labels. The map projection gives us different ways of viewing the actual map itself. It doesn't make a huge difference on some of them at all. But the map area will give us the opportunity to view it as the whole world. We can view just the country or the region in question. We can view the regions only with data, and so it removes any regions that don't have data. We can also then add map labels. Now, the map labels here are only the, the region names that have been selected in the data. It doesn't include the actual values. We can then add or change our series color. Now, from our series color, we have two different options. We have a two color option or we have a three color option. And then we can select our minimum, our midpoint, and our maximum point. And we can change the colors accordingly to our own design or our own custom needs. We would also change the title of the chart. So we could put in something like population, if I only I could spell. And we can make this chart then a little bit bigger. Now from our design ribbon, I'm gonna close our format area for the moment. And I am going to just show you the data labels. So we added data labels from the format series and that just added the city names. But you can also add data labels from chart elements, which will show the values that are contained within the cells that are defining how deep the color is for how populated that particular region is. So that's the data labels. We also then can change the style of the chart from our chart design ribbon. And we can make the chart look, again, give it that more of a custom feel to the way we want it to look. Now there is a thing with these map charts and I've tested these map charts with some other data. I'm gonna put in here County Dublin, which is where I live. County Cork, which is a, another very large city in Ireland. And I am going to put in County Kerry. And I'm just gonna put in some random numbers here. Ran between 500 and 1,000, 1,000. Just some random numbers for the sake of this example. And now I'm gonna try and map this with a field map. And we'll, we see that it says that map charts needs geographical data such as country, region, state, province, and it doesn't work. It really depends on the locations. It depends on how it's been set up. If I change this just to Dublin, you'll note it still hasn't identified it. However, if I change it to a rich data type, it then does actually find it. So rich data types do really help when you are creating map charts in Excel by using geography rich data types. Excel seems to know better where the location is than if you just put in your city name, your region name. Now I have tried these with states in America. and it seems to work quite well. I am going to delete that chart again, and I will insert a map chart. And it quite easily found New York without it being a rich data type, but it wasn't able to locate Dublin without it being a rich data type. 
So if you are exploring the use of mapped charts, if you can convert your data to rich data types, you're going to get a more accurate and a quicker result in your maps. So that is our map charts. What we're going to move on to now is stock history and stock charts. Now, stock history is another new function in Excel. The data types that we looked at earlier for currency and for stocks pulls in current information and some historical in information. However, stock history will allow you pull in historical prices for foreign currencies, for stocks, for all the items that we see in that we could use on the stock rich data type or the stock linked data type. Now, at the moment, this stock history function is only available in the Insiders Edition. The Insiders Edition is another thing that has been rebranded by Microsoft, and it is now the beta channel. So if you are on the beta channel, you should have this stock history function. If you're not on the beta channel, you will have to wait for it to be rolled out into Excel 365. So as I mentioned, this stock history function will pull in historical pricing information for your stocks, for your currencies, for your bonds, for your commodities. And using this, you can then create stock charts. So let's have a look at the stock history function. I have some stocks here. Some of them are stocks. One of them is a, current, is a cryptocurrency. So we have Bitcoin to Indian rupee. And we're going to create a drop down from these so we can quickly switch between the actual different um, investment types that we have selected. So I'm going to go to my data ribbon. I am going to go to data validation and I'm going to select a list. And my source is my rich data types and say, OK, so now I can quickly pick my different data types. I will zoom in a little so you can see this better. OK, from here, now that we have our drop down created, we can start exploring our stock history function. So we see stock history returns an array of historically quoted data for a symbol and a date range that you specify. So you can specify any particular dates that you want and it will return all these historic prices for you. So let's select this formula. And the first thing it is looking for is our stock. Now with the stock, you can, in inverted commas, you can put in the stock net, the ticker name. So let's say MSFT, which would be Microsoft. So you'd need to know the ticker name if you're not going to reference a cell. You also have the opportunity of selecting an actual stock market. So we see up here we have N or XNAS, which is the NASDAQ. So if you, you were wanted to see this on a different stock exchange, you would specify the stock exchange before the double dots, before the actual ticker symbol. In our case, we can reference this cell here because in this cell here, we have our drop down and we can quickly rotate between the different investments that we have. Then it is looking for a start date. So let's just say we wanted to find the pricing information for the last 30 days. So we could use the today function, minus 30, to get the last 30 days. Now the end date, is always the last closing date. So the end date for me will be the 16th because we are halfway through the 17th and the close hasn't actually happened yet for the day. So the last close date is always going to be the previous close. I'm not going to put in an end date at all. I'm going to skip the end date. You can skip any items in a formula that have a square bracket around them. So that means it'll by default bring it right up to yesterday's date. Then we have the intervals. So do we want to see the data daily? Do we want to see it weekly? Do we want to see it monthly? So I'm going to select zero for daily and it moves on to our next option, which is our headers option. 
So we have the ability here to show no headers, to show headers and to show the instrument identifier and the header. The instrument identifier is basically the stock or the foreign exchange that we've already selected. So we don't need that. We just need the headers. Now, after this, we have our properties. We can pull in the date, the close, the open, the high, the low, and the volume. Now, this is great trading information. And for anybody that does follow the price of stocks, follow the price of currency, or is involved in any sort of trading, this is really, really awesome. So zero to pull in date, we then get to put in quite a number of other properties. So I'm going to start with the open. I'm then going to put in the open, the high, the low, and the close price. And I'm going to exclude the volume. Now, the reason why I am excluding the volume is because volume at the moment is not available with um, cryptocurrencies or foreign exchanges. It is available with different stocks and different commodities, but it's not available with everything. So I'm going to exclude the volume and we see we get this busy error. And when we got that busy error, it reached into the Internet. It then creates this spill array showing all of the dates for the last 30 days. It shows the open, the high, the low, and the closed price. It also formats these cells by the correct currency. So we see we have our currency symbol in here. Now, again, this is smart formatting. If I select the cell here, you'll see that the format type of this cell is general. It's not formatted as currency, and it's not formatted as accountancy. If I change this to Microsoft, we see that that also changes then to the US dollar because it's priced in US dollar from the NASDAQ stock exchange. And I didn't have to change any of this formatting here. Now, this auto formatting or smart formatting doesn't work if your cells are pre-formatted to any other type than general. You'll also note from this, that we had a spill range. So the formula is kept in this top cell here, but if we click into any of these other formulas, we see any of these other cells, we see that the formula is actually grayed out. So we can't change the formula from in, within these cells. If we put something into a cell, let's put in the word problem, we see we get this spill error as we looked at earlier on from our dynamic arrays. And this spill error lets us know that there's something in the way to actually spill the results for us. So if we just delete this, or if it was important information, you can copy it and move it somewhere else. And your data will automatically spill for you. Now, because we created this dropdown, we can quickly then change between all of the different values or all of the different investments and see all of the different investments and their different pricing. But then we can also extract stuff from the card. So these are yesterday's prices. But if we wanted today's price, we can then also have today's price in a cell as well. So you can still extract information from the cards as well as using the stock function, the stock history function. Now, with this stock history function, you know, pouring over tables of data like this, we could add a little bit of custom formatting maybe to highlight high points or low points. But it can be quite difficult pouring over tables of data like this to actually spot key values. Are the values going up or are the values going down? So what we can do is we can plot all of this using a stock chart. So I'm going to select our data from my insert ribbon. We have up here in our charts, we have our stock charts. Now there's four different stock charts. There is the high, low, close stock chart. There is the open high, low, close stock chart. There is a volume high, low, close stock chart and a volume open high, low, close stock chart. Now you'll notice as I hovered over these that some of them are not giving a preview. 
The reason they're not giving a preview is because when you're using stock charts, you need to have the data set up in a specific order. That's why I was quite specific in the order that I selected in these selections up here, the intervals and the properties up here. I was quite specific in selecting open, high, low, close. And I was specific in selecting them because I wanted to create this open, high, low, close chart. And you'll see when I hover over this one, we get a preview letting us know that we have the data in the right order and we can actually select this chart. So let me just make this chart a little bit bigger. And again, we can format this chart to something more to our liking. So if we select our particular data points and we can fill in our down arrows, let's just say in red, and we could take our up arrow bars and we could fill these into green. So now we, it's clearer to see what our down bars and what our up bars. Just reading this chart to explain how this chart works, we have the bottom point down here. So that is the low point. The high point then is the point up the top. And then we have where most of the trading occurs in the cell here. So the red ones are up bars and the green ones are down bars. If we now select from our investment and our drop down, and we select from our drop down, and my rich data type field is in the way. We see now that our chart updates and our table also updates. Now in our title, I'm going to reference the cell here. Oh. Oh, I'm not sure why that doesn't work. I should be able to just add in a title here. My Excel seems to be going a little bit bonkers and there's no title coming in. Okay, my chart title is back in. If I put in an equals, I should be able to reference our rich, there we go, reference our rich data type cell as the title of our cell. So then when we drop down and change our chart and change our table, our title on our chart also updates as well. So that is a great use of the stock history function. It's a function that I am really, really fond of, even though it's only brand new, it's only available on the beta edition. I can't wait for it to be rolled out to everybody. I know a lot of people in finance, I know a lot of people in accountancy, and they're really excited by this because they work in multi-currencies, they'd like to be able to pull in pricing and have it update automatically. And because all of these are connected to the web, they're all live, you can refresh them and you can update any of the data types straight away without the need to do anything else. Now, just one other thing before we actually finish up is that I'm going to go to data and I am going to add this data from a table or a range into Power Query. So it doesn't have headers. And I'm just going to pull this into Power Query for a second. And what you'll notice in Power Query is that the rich data type fields don't pull in. And I did, I wanted to show you this, I skipped over it earlier in error, so I'm just going back to it. It does identify the fields that you extract from a rich data type, but it doesn't actually identify the rich data type cells on their own. So if you're using this with Power Query, you may need to insert another column. If you went back to your data, I'm not gonna save that, I'm gonna discard that. If we went back in here, or it was this one that I pulled it from, wasn't it? If we go back into these, and we could probably pull in the name, 
Then we could then use this in Power Query and it would recognize this field here, although it won't recognize that field there. So that was just something I just wanted to point out because I know quite a lot of work these days is done in Power Query. Now, just to finish up on this, um, and we are going to talk about the future. So Microsoft have released this article here, what linked data types are available in Excel. Rolling out on the insiders edition or on the beta edition and also in one of the higher licenses. So I'm not 100% sure if it's the E3 or the E5 license, but on one of the higher licenses, there are going to be many, many more data types available. And this is really, really exciting. Excel is going to reach onto the internet and we've already seen stocks, we've already seen geography, but there's also organizational data which is available that you can view through Power BI, but we're also going to have locations, zip codes, we're gonna have universities, we're gonna have stuff about space, satellites, chemistry, elements, food, so if you put in a food type, you'd be able to pull back different, different information about the calories that's involved in the food, exercise, movies. There's so many rich data types. From what I hear, there's over 100 rich or linked data types that are going to become available in Excel 365 um, over the next few months, but they are going to be available in a higher license type. So just keep a an eye out for that. But that is really, really, really exciting. So that is basically it, my introduction to linked data types in Excel. I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today and I think we can open up now for questions. Ola, anything on sports? Do we have some data on sports also? I can't hear you. Do we we will we will have any data on sports? I, I can't I can't hear you at all. Like you said for movies, will we have anything on sports? Ah, on sports. Sorry, let me go back into their website there. <laughs> it's not saying anything about sports. It's not saying anything okay. about sports. So I, I can't I can't confer oh activities. Yogas, well, there's some yogas. If there's activities, then yeah, there's nature, media, body, medical, characters. I mm -hmm. would say there probably will be stuff about sports. So there will be limited access to Google and more access to Excel. Yes, well, if this isn't going to be ran through Google. This is going to be ran through this Wolfram Alpha. So Microsoft have obviously come up with, with an agreement with this data provider, and I'm sure to Microsoft, there is a cost involved in this, and that's why that they'll probably only be available on the higher licenses. Good. Uh, Nidhi, do you have any questions, Nidhi, uh, from the audience? As of now, there, there are no questions, Mom. Thank you. Thank you. I was either too good or nobody could understand what I was saying. <laughs> session was very good. Uh, <laughs> since it is a new topic, I think most of the members uh, may not have the uh, latest version of Excel. Maybe that's the reason. Yeah, I mean, that is a problem. And it's a problem that I'm encountering a lot. And um, even when I'm building models for people, I have to be very careful on um, what version of Excel that they're using, because there's such differences in the different versions of Excel and some of the stuff that's been released over the last two years in Excel 365 is really, really amazing, but not a huge amount of the population is actually on 365. So it is causing problems for training and for building things for clients and stuff like that. There is one question, I mean, not related to today's topic, just whether you can answer it. Uh, there is one member in the audience who wants to know whether can we use the formula called areas or reference in dashboard. Uh, someone from Excel Universe 
uh, a member from excel universe he wants to understand he, how can we use the function name areas and the function name reference in any dashboard okay so the function wasn't area um the it's a dot function or the field value function and when you're setting up a dashboard quite often you will have a data sheet a separate calculations sheet so yes you can have a calculation sheet with these rich data types you can extract your information and then you can have your link your dashboard to it and use the fields from rich data types in a dashboard yes Uh, Nidhi, can you speak on uh, Ronak's question? Yes, sir. Uh, so there is a question come up. Uh, so he asked, when we, copy, when we copy the data from the cell with the gray formula, will it copy the formula or the value? So that is when we are looking at our dynamic arrays. So you're asking if I copy this value here, I can paste the value. Yes, but it's no longer linked. It doesn't copy the formula. It'll just copy the value. If I copy it and try and paste it as a formula, it doesn't actually work at all, no. But you, you have to copy it from the original source cell when you're using a dynamic array formula. So really, these cells aren't populated with anything. Everything is contained within the cell that's in the formula, but it spills out into a range. It's a whole new way that Excel is actually working. There's a whole new calculation engine and all behind these new dynamic array functions. There is one more question coming up. If rich data type is converted to normal type, what can be done to avoid error? Can we use paste values? Yes. You can copy the values and paste them straight away and you don't lose them then. If you just paste them as values, you don't lose them if you convert the rich data type cell back to a text cell. Uh, Paula, does it, uh, the file need to be always connected to internet to get the data updated or can I also work offline? It, okay, so I, when you originally reach into the internet to connect these values, you, you need to be connected to the internet. But if you lose connection, you're not going to lose your values because the values are actually stored in Excel somewhere in the background. Um, I think it was Bill Jelling done a video on it not too long ago, a very interesting video on it not too long ago, where he actually converted the Excel file so he could open it and read the code in it. And he was able to find that these values were actually stored in Excel. So once you pull them into Excel, they're stored in Excel, they're not stored online. Thank you, Paula. And with regard to the geographical map, is there any setting to be done to enable map? Map charts, I think, were introduced in Excel 2016. So I think once you have Excel 2016 or later, you should have map charts. Would I have to enable power map to get this chart done? No, I... it's, this isn't power maps. This is just normal map charts. So it's not the power maps. Okay, okay. So the power maps I have mine are called 3D maps because they updated the name, like they rebrand everything else. Uh, it's now 3D maps. So that is a separate map to the field map charts that I looked at. So I'm nearly a hundred percent sure these were introduced in Excel 2016. Uh, there is one more question. Uh, will this affect anything on the file size? Yes, it does make the file a little bit bigger because all of these values are, as I said, once it pulls the information in, it does actually store them as values in the background in Excel. But it doesn't make it so large that it's unmanageable. I mean, I've worked with workbooks that are, are fairly big and anything I've done with rich data types hasn't thrown a problem for me with the size of the file. 
but it would have an impact on the size of the file if they're actually the values are stored within Excel. Good, Paula. Anything else you want to share? We have uh, ample time. Uh, anything you want to share? Uh, your experience on the Excel and the or any other Excel tools you to feel it is relevant for us? Um. No, not really. I don't have anything else kind of prepared. Just if anybody wants to contact me, if anybody does have any questions that they haven't asked now, I know sometimes people can be shy and stuff online. My email address is there. I do tend to answer emails as often as I possibly can. You can also find me on LinkedIn. And um, if anybody's interested in taking a few courses on Udemy, I have a number of free courses available on Udemy that are quite popular. So feel free to jump in and to explore them. Quite a lot of my students, I have to say, over half of my students are from India. So I seem to be quite popular over there. I'm not sure how everybody can understand me, though. <laughs> Uh, for the members uh, and audience, uh, Paula has almost had 90,000 plus, 90, plus uh, uh, students in Udemy. So she's almost popular. She's nearing to a 1 million record uh, in short time. Uh, Mola, Paula, can you just zoom in the screen so that members can note their email ID and uh, LinkedIn? I profile. will indeed, yes. I can also um, I can send you on a copy of this workbook. Sure, sure as well and you can then share it there with anybody that wants it to be shared with so they can play around with what I have already set up. Sure. Nidhi and Sayal, anything else? I think that's it for me. Uh, one second, one second. Ma'am, would you like to share your journey with us? Sorry? Uh, can you share your journey of uh, how you got so passionate about Excel and... Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, well, as I mentioned, I am an accountant by profession and to me, Excel is a tool for accountants. Um, now, okay, it's a tool for everybody, but accountants really, really rely on Excel. It doesn't matter how much organizations have spent on fancy softwares, us accountants tend to take something out of the system and dump it into Excel and just do everything in Excel. I had quite a lot of senior positions while I was working as an accountant and what I found was that there was a major, major skills gap with accountants in Ireland. And when I was trying to hire people with good Excel skills, I used to give them an Excel test when they come in for an interview. And if they didn't pass the Excel test, they weren't going to get the job, which was quite harsh. <laughs> and but most people never passed the Excel test. Nobody even knew how to do a VLOOKUP. And, you know, they'd have this CV that said they had amazing Excel skills and then when put to practice, they weren't able to do it. Excel isn't taught as a subject in accountancy and plumbers are taught how to use their tools and electricians are taught how to use their tools. So I kind of noticed a gap in the market and training for accountants, specifically for accountants in using Excel. So it was back in 2010, back before there was too much e-learning, Udemy was only starting and I made a series of videos which I went to a disc, a CD ROM. Um, and I went to the professional accountancy in institutes here in Ireland with this CD ROM saying, Look, I'm after creating this course. All accountants should know these skills. It's very basic. Should we do something as part of CPD with this? So, CPD is continuous professional development. And in Ireland, if you're an accountant, you need to do 30 hours every year of courses that are accredited for CPD. So along with the accountancy bodies here in Ireland, we partnered up together and I became the first accredited uh, Excel CPD provider in Ireland. And it kind of just kind of grew from there. Um, I no longer practice as an accountant. I kind of teach online full time. I have my courses and I have my blog and 
it just kind of took off for me being the only provider in Ireland at the time um, and right up until about 2016 I had the market to myself so I was in a position that I was able to give up the accountancy work and focus on training accountants but then I expanded from just training ex- accountants. I branched out onto Udemy and um, I started to grow my blog and I started to blog. And it kind of just, I think it was around 2015, I started on Udemy. I put a course up there and walked away. It was another two years later before I revisited and actually start putting a little bit of effort into it. So around 2016, 17, I start putting effort into Udemy and now I'm, yeah, I'm up at 90,000 students and things just keep getting better. So I kind of fell into it. And that is the, the history. Very inspirational journey, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your journey. No problem. I hand over Shreyans to continue further. Sorry? Shreyans, I request you to take it further. Maybe you can give the closing remarks. Maybe you can give the closing. I can't hear. Thank you, ma'am. The session was really insightful. We are very glad to have you. And uh, I hope we have more and more sessions with you. So thank you thank so you much. Thank you very much for having me. It was It's a, really a pleasure to be here. I was delighted to be invited. I think, um, you know, all the bad with COVID, things like this, online meetups and being able to do things like this across the world, different doors have opened. Um, And although it's not a nice time, it's also an exciting time for people that are doing stuff like this online. So thank you very much for inviting me. There's no way I would have been able to do something like this in person. So it was really awesome. Uh, Thank you, Paula, for instantly accepting our invite and uh, being over here and sharing your wisdom. Uh, We'll definitely look forward for one more session in future in uh, a different topic. Uh, We will actually leverage your MVP, I mean, uh, being an MVP, we would like to hear you more and more. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Teams.